Welcome. My name is John Brooker and this is an introduction to the original substance of the Divine Principle. In this session, number four, we'll study the Principle of Restoration. The providence of restoration refers to God's work to restore human beings to our original unfallen state so that we may fulfill the purpose of creation. This session will cover God's providence in Adam's family, Noah's family, and Abraham's family as recorded in the Bible. This same providence continued from these families to Jesus and the second coming. It is a providence through which fallen man and woman can be restored to realize the purpose of creation. We begin by explaining the process of restoration which happens through indemnity. Adam and Eve fell at the top of the growth stage into the dominion of Satan. Their path to oneness with God, inheriting God's divine nature and becoming the temples of God was blocked and they relate with Satan as well as God. So the first thing we need to do is go through a course to separate Satan from ourselves. We do this in order to restore ourselves to the spiritual level that Adam and Eve reached before the fall, the top of the growth stage. This is the path of indemnity. It is a process of seeking the original path. On this foundation, we are to receive the Messiah and be reborn. We are fully restored to the state of original human beings at the point at which they fell. From there, by following the Messiah, we continue our growth to maturity on the path of principle and shimjong, to fulfill the perfection of true love. We become once again God's eternal sons and daughters, living with altruism, compassion, and internal and external excellence. Definition when someone has lost their original position or status, they must make some condition to be restored to it. The making of such conditions of restitution is called indemnity. We must next understand in what position, due to the fall, human beings came to stand. <coughs> if the first human ancestors had not fallen, they would have lived relating only with God. However, due to their fall, they joined in a kinship of blood with Satan. So we are in a midway position, relating to God through our original mind and to Satan through our evil mind. We go to God's side if we make good conditions and to Satan's side if we make evil conditions. We cannot remain in the midway position forever. Jesus said, Matthew 6, 24, No one can serve two Matthews. Masters, And God told a church, You are luke lukewarm. I am about to spit you out. Revelation 3.16 To free ourselves from Satan's claim, we carry out acts of faith and love called conditions of indemnity. Next, we'll look at the types of conditions of indemnity condition of equal indemnity. In this case, restoration is achieved by making a condition of indemnity at a price equal to the value of what was lost when one departed from the original position or state. The verse life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth refers to this type of indemnity condition. Condition of a lesser indemnity. In this case, restoration is achieved by making a condition of indemnity at price less than the value of what was lost. Examples, redemption to the cross, baptism by water, holy communion, forgiveness of a debt. Condition of greater indemnity. When a person has failed to meet a condition, he must make another at a price greater than the first. Examples. Abraham's offering of Isaac, Israel's 40-year wilderness course under Moses. Indemnity conditions reverse the course of the fall. Indemnity releases us from Satan's claim by reversing the course of the fall, renouncing Satan's love. Examples of indemnity as reversal. Adam forsook God, God forsook Jesus, and nonetheless Jesus attended God, Matthew 27. 
46. Humankind rejected Jesus. Humankind should love Jesus and bear the cross. Adam violated the will and grieved God. Humankind should love the will and comfort God. Here's one common example of indemnity. We tend to cast blame on others when adversity strikes. Let us learn from Jesus on the cross. We pay indemnity when we do not blame God and do not blame anyone. Instead, take responsibility beginning with forgiveness and take the debt on oneself. We begin with the conditions of Adam and Eve should have made and then the course of the fall by which they failed to set those conditions. The essential indemnity conditions are those that reverse the course of the fall and create oneness with God and others. The conditions Adam and Eve should have made were two in number. First, faith in God's words. This is vertical and is called the foundation of faith. Second, dominion over the creation. The angels in the spirit world in all things. This is horizontal is called the foundation of substance. This brings us to the point at which we can cross the line to the status of Adam and Eve before the fall. But we cannot cross the line by ourselves. We need God's grace given through the Messiah. And so for fallen people to be restored to the point before Adam and Eve fell, which is their original state, we must receive the Messiah. But this requires a foundation to receive the Messiah. The indemnity conditions that are required are the two conditions Adam and Eve were to have done, the foundation of faith and the foundation of substance. This reverses the course of the fall in which they lost the foundations of faith and substance. What are the foundation of faith and foundation of substance? Jesus thought these in Matthew 22. 36 through 40 when he answered the question about the great commandment he answered to love the Lord thy God and to love your neighbor as yourself He told us to set the foundation of faith loving God and the foundation of substance loving our neighbor together these are the foundation to receive the Messiah the foundation of faith is a vertical condition between human beings and God foundation of substance is a horizontal condition of unity between neighbors, with the most important one being the unity of the younger and the elder. Together, the foundation of faith and substance are the foundation to receive the Messiah. To move to the next level of detail, we will look how this principle applies to the biblical account of Adam's family after the fall. The foundation of faith requires a central figure. It should have been Adam himself, but by the fall, he failed to make the foundation of faith. It passed to his younger son, Abel, for reasons we will explain shortly. The object of faith, or object for the condition, was God's word. But Adam lost God's word, and so obedience to God's word turned into offering a symbol of God's word. The symbol of God's word was a firstborn of Abel's flock of sheep. The foundation of faith has to cover a period of time, representing a period through which Adam should have grown to maturity in faith. This time period in the Bible is usually based on the numbers 4, 12, 21, or 40. The, the substance of love should have been fulfilled by Adam and Eve, but they fell, and so the foundation of substance had to be restored by neighbors, their two sons, Cain and Abel. Abel, the younger son, rep represented Adam and Eve, and Cain represented the archangel. Why was this? We will explain below. So the foundation of faith and the foundation of substance together would have brought about the foundation to receive the Messiah in Adam's family. The Messiah could have been born within a short number of generations because human society was on the family level. So let's see what happened to the providence of restoration in Adam's family. First of all, Adam could not make the offering. He could not be the central figure. He was, res was the person responsible for the fall who broke the heart of God. There was a deep wound and no way for Adam to heal it. 
His position serving to man's masters was unprincipled. He embodied both good and evil, and Satan could claim anything he offered. He had blamed others and could not take responsibility. So nowhere in the biblical record do we find Adam offering a sacrifice. Adam was a confused person, conflicted between good and evil, claimed by both God and Satan. Somehow God had to find a way to divide good from evil. God worked through the sons, Cain and Abel, each of them made an offering to God, which one of them was to represent goodness and relate with God and which was to represent e evil and interact with Satan. That would determine which offering God could accept. Cain and Abel both were the fruits of the fall, hence their relative positions were determined according to its course. The fall was consummated through Eve's illicit love relationships, one with Lucifer and one with Adam. Between the two, the second was more in line with the principle, more forgivable than the first because Eve was motivated by her heartfelt longing to return to God's bosom. Since Cain was the first fruit of Eve's love, he was chosen to relate with Satan. Since Abel was a fruit of Eve's second love, he was chosen to relate with God. Also for his part, Satan had seized control of the world in the original world. God intended to have the eldest son inherit the birthright. Therefore God Satan felt a stronger attachment to elder son, and God chose to deal with, with Abel. The Bible tests the different missions of the first and second born sons. When the Israelites fled Egypt, God struck the first born sons and first born of the livestock. Exodus twelve twenty nine. In the wilderness course, only the younger sons were allowed to carry the Ark of the Covenant, Numbers 31 to 25. God hated the elder Esau and loved the younger Jacob when they were in the womb, Genesis 25, 23. When Ephraim and Manasseh were blessed, Jacob crossed his hands to place his right hand on the younger son, Genesis 48, 14. This is why when they each made an offering, Cain and Abel were in a position where each could deal with only one master, and they offered separate sacrifices. Cain offered crops, and Abel offered a lamb. Abel's offering was accepted, Cain's was not. The indemnity condition to remove the fallen nature. God accepted the second son's offering. In this way, Abel, the central figure, offered the object for the condition fulfilling a time period. He laid the foundation of faith. At the same time, Cain's offering was rejected and he f just felt like the archangel. God loved Cain, but God could not accept Cain's offering unless he first separated himself from Satan by his own choice. God told this to Cain when he said, Sin is crouching at your door and you must master it. The Bible records the offerings of Cain and Abel, Genesis 4, 5 through 8. In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought the fruit of the ground in offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. When Cain and Abel offered their sacrifices, the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and in his offering he had no regard. This set up the foundation of substance, which required Cain to love his younger brother Abel and make his offering through Abel. Abel should have loved Cain, and Cain should have seen Abel from God's point of view and made this offering through Abel. The foundation of substance would then have been laid in Adam's family and Adam's family would have established a foundation for the Messiah. And it records the results of the offering, the first murder in human history. Cain was very wroth 
and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with, it, with Abel his brother. And it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother, and slew him. Cain killed Abel. And murdering Abel, Cain repeated the sin of the archangel. Adam's family thus failed to lay the foundation of substance. Consequently, God's providence of restoration through Adam's family could not be fulfilled. We learn lessons from the ethics of Cain and Abel. There are many instances in human life that correspond to the situation of Cain and Abel. When you are in the Abel position, avoid the tendency to arrogance, pride, and boastfulness about how God loves you and has blessed you. Be obedient and modest. Don't take credit. Give credit to others and to God. Work hard to win the heart of those less fortunate, sacrificing with blood, sweat, and tears. Realize that your blessings ultimately come through the people who are less blessed and fortunate than you, and that God blessed you so they can reach them through you. When you are in the cane position, avoid anger, disfatigation, dissatisfaction and self-pity. Maintain a heart of gratitude and hope. Be humble to those who are blessed more than you, absolutely, out of your own free will. Realize that God wants to bless you abundantly based on your love for others, even those who find you difficult to love, such as your younger brother Abel. The principle of Cain and Abel is universal in the quest of humankind to receive the Messiah. If you are in Abel's position, commit all you have to be one with God. Love those less fortunate than you, even your enemy, with the love God has given you plus your own love. Realize you are others' pathway to heaven, even though you are unworthy, so take responsibility. Pray incessantly, because God can intervene with the position of Cain only through you. If you are in the position of Cain, you will contend with a desire to kill. God wants to teach you Shimjung, living for others and loving your enemy through the position of Abel. The providence God worked to accomplish through Adam's family has been repeated over and over again. Consequently, this course remains as an indemnity course we ourselves must walk. The providence of restoration in Noah's family. Noah stood upon the foundation of Abel's loyalty and faithful heart. Furthermore, he was a righteous man in the sight of God. For these reasons, he was qualified to make the symbolic offering to God by building the ark. The object for the condition was the ark. The growing period was represented by the 40-day flood. Through these conditions, Noah set the foundation of faith. The foundation of substance had to be carried out by Noah's first and second sons, standing in the position of Abel, Ham the younger, and Cain, Shem the older. When the foundations of faith and foundations of substance fulfilled by these individuals in Noah's family, they would have set the foundation to receive the Messiah. So Ham was to have loved and moved Shem, his older brother, to go with him to his father, Noah through him as his younger brother. By volunteering uniting with Ham, centering on Ham's oneness with Noah, Shem could have removed his fallen nature. To fulfill the responsibility of Abel, 
Ham, Noah's second son, first had to inherit the position of Abel, which his father Noah had restored, and create the foundation of substance with his elder brother Shem. For Ham to stand in the position of Abel, he had to be inseparably one in heart with Noah. God worked to help Ham do this, and the story is recorded in Genesis 9, 20 through 26. Noah had saved his family, settled in the new world, and planted a vineyard. One day he drank wine and fell asleep naked in his tent. Ham entered the tent. He could have respectfully, out of gratitude to the father who had built the ark and saved the family, covered him and let him rest. But instead he felt shame, took offense, and judged his father. He then stirred up the same feelings in his brother Shem and Japheth, swayed by Ham to feel ashamed of their father's nakedness, and turning their faces so as not to behold the sight, they walked backwards and covered their father's body with a garment. Ham's mission for the foundation of substance was based on his oneness with his father. Noah, <clears throat> when he looked at Noah in the tent, did he look at him without shame as an unfallen man or with shame as a fallen man, tainted by Satan? He looked at Noah with shame and to, and to a position to judge him. The shame over nakedness re-entered the world. This act constituted a sin so much so that Noah rebuked him, cursing his son to be a slave to his brothers. The reason Ham's shame constituted a sin. To understand this, let us first recall what constitutes sin. Sin means to form a common base with Satan and provide him with a condition, enabling him to act. There thereby violating heavenly law. Noah's position after the flood was like that of Adam, after the creation of heaven and earth, naked and not ashamed. God expected that the members of Noah's family would react to Noah's nakedness without any feelings of shame. God wanted to recover the joyful heart he had felt when looking at Adam and Eve in their innocence before the fall. Had Ham been one in heart with Noah, regarding him with the same heart and from the same standpoint as God, he would have looked upon his father's nakedness without any sense of shame. He thus would have fulfilled the indemnity condition to restore Adam and Eve's innocence before the fall. We can understand that when Noah's sons felt ashamed of their father's nakedness, they formed a bond of kinship with Satan. He made a condition for Satan to enter. Hence, Adam's feeling and action constituted a sin. Is always sinful to regard nakedness with a sense of shame? No. Noah's was a special case. This was an indemnity condition which only Noah's family was required to fulfill. Ham failed to become the central figure for the foundation of substance, and so the foundation of substance failed and the foundation for the Messiah failed. As a consequence, languages and races divided. The Providence of Restoration in Adam's Family God chose Adam to inherit Noah's mission and thus the mission of Adam. As God had blessed Adam and Noah, God also blessed Abraham. Genesis 12, 2-3 I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you, and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. Before making the foundation of faith, Abraham was required to make a symbolic indemnity condition to restore the position of Adam's family. In Genesis 12, 10 through 20, the Bible gives an account of a trip Abraham made to Egypt. When they entered Egypt, Abraham instructed his wife Sarah to pose as his sister. 
because he was afraid that the Pharaoh might desire her. <clears throat> Abraham feared that the Pharaoh would have killed him killed if he found out that he was Sarah's husband. Indeed, at the Pharaoh's command, Abraham handed Sarah over to him while she posed as his sister. Thereupon God chastised the Pharaoh. Abraham took back his wife, along with his nephew Lot and the abundant wealth that the Pharaoh had given him, and they left Egypt. Abraham walked his providential course to make an indemnity condition to restore Adam's family. When the archangel took Eve, Adam and Eve were still brother and sister. For Abraham to make the con indemnity condition to restore this, he was deprived of Sarah, who was playing the role of his sister, by the Pharaoh, who represented Satan. He then had to take her back from the Pharaoh as his wife, together with Lot as a representative of all humanity and wealth symbolizing the natural world. Once he had fulfilled this indemnity condition, Abraham was deemed ready to make the symbolic offering for the foundation of faith. Abraham offered three types of objects as a condition for his offering the heifer, ram, and doves in Abraham's symbolic offering, which the principle explains in detail, reveals God's will to fulfill the entire providence of restoration once and for all. God's plan was for Abraham's sons, Isaac and Ishmael, to stand in a position of Abel and Cain for the foundation of substance and for Abraham's family to set the foundation for the Messiah. Abraham did not succeed in the symbolic offering, Genesis 15, 9 through 13. He failed to cut the birds in half. Because he did not divide the dove and pigeon as he should have, birds of prey came down and defiled the sacrifices. As a result of his mistake, the Israelites were destined to enter Egypt and suffer hardships for 400 years. Genesis 15:13. Then he said to Abraham, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, and they will afflict them 400 years. The foundation of faith had to be repaired, repeated. If it had been successful, Isaac and Ishmael would have been the central figures for the foundation of substance. Abraham once again had to demonstrate right faith by repeating the symbolic indemnity condition for the restoration of Adam's family. This is the reason Abraham once again put Sarah in the position of his sister and let her be taken by a king, this time Abimelech of Gerar. Genesis 20, 1 through 14. After she became the king's wife, Abraham took her back. It was a repeat of the episode in Egypt. God then set up Isaac in the position of Abraham, but to allow Isaac to inherit Abraham's faith, God commanded him to sacrifice him as a burnt offering. Through Abraham's absolute faith and Isaac's absolute obedience, the position of Abel and the position of faith went to went to Isaac. Isaac's eldest son Esau assumed the role of Cain while Jacob stood in the position of Abel. Esau and Jacob began fighting inside their mother's womb because they were in these opposing positions. Again, we see the same principle, foundation of faith and foundation of substance, to build the foundation for the Messiah. Jacob first had to fulfill the indemnity condition to restore the position of Abel. First, Jacob restored the birthright of the eldest son. Jacob brought the birthright from Esau in exchange for bread and a pottage of lentils. 
God had Isaac blessed Jacob and not Esau because Jacob valued the birthright. And Esau thought, saw, thought so little of it that he traded it for a meal. Esau, like Cain, grew hateful. He vowed to kill Jacob. Second, Jacob went to Haran to suffer through 21 years of drudgery. He restored a family and wealth, not for himself, but to restore oneness with his brother Esau. Third, on his way back to Esau, Jacob triumphed by wrestling with an angel at the fort of Jabbok, thereby restoring dominion over the ar archangel. Through these victories, Jacob restored through indemnity the position of Abel and became the central figure of the substantial offering. Jacob offered his family and wealth to win e Esau's heart. Genesis 32, 1 through 20. Jacob won over Esau to love, respect, and receive God's blessings through him. When Esau opened his arms and effectually welcomed Jacob, they fulfilled the foundation of substance for the first time in God's providence. This established a foundation of the Messiah in Abraham's family. Jesus came to this lineage, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Genesis 33, 1-12. Lessons. The human portion of responsibility, our 5%, is necessary for the fulfillment of God's will. Even small mistakes, such as a failure in Abraham's symbolic offering, can lead to greater indemnity conditions. In that case, 400 years of slavery in Egypt. We each have to divide good and evil within ourselves. Rebecca, Jacob's mother, helped him in his course. This cooperation of mother and son is vital to God's providence. The pathway to heaven requires investment of blood, sweat, and tears for your enemy and obedient submission to God through the one who is sacrificing for you. Everything in one's course of life hinges on the decisions we make in one moment. A moment can have lifelong and eternal impact. Each moment relates to your lifetimes. Always be awake. Discussion. What's one thing you would do in your life to make ready for the Messiah? Two. Share an example from a movie, novel, or personal experience where you observe the dynamic of Cain and Abel. Number three. How do you see history repeat itself in your own life?